So the second album comes out, does extremely well, mm -hmm. but then Bobby Brown starts having issues with the group. Right. Did you personally have issues with, with uh, Bobby? Yeah, we all did. I mean, because we're, we're so close, we spend a lot of time together. And I think our problems with Bob started, I mean, personally was, it, I think it started mainly like on stage for the most part, because we would, there was this issue when he would just, when he was singing Telephone Man, he would just do something different every night. Hmm. We didn't know how long he was gonna <laughs> do the song and, and I remember he being in the remix on stage. We were yeah. being we were in Oakland, and I personally I said to him I was like, "Yo, if you," I was like, "If you take that song any longer than what it's supposed to be, I'm just gonna cue the band to go into the next song." Okay. He was like, "You better not," you know, and, and he was like, "All right, we'll see," because he's singing Telephone Man, and we're back there like this, you know. Click every time it's supposed to go, but we're holding our hands up like this, <laughs> waiting for the song to end. And, and it would get out. longer and longer every night. So I'm like, yo, end the song. And then he still did the same thing. He's going on and on and on. And I looked back at the band and gave him the cue. <laughs> and they just dropped in the cooler now. And he looked back at us like if looks could kill, man. He took his mic and threw it up in the air. It almost hit Mike. He walked off the stage. <laughs> And while we're performing Cool It Now, he comes back with his robe on, with no shirt, sits on the edge of the stage, like, and just, all his name, then just starts beatboxing out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 and he, and Mike, you know, Mike is like, Mike doesn't have that many parts on, on songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's beatboxing over Mike's rap. Mike's not having it. Mike's right. like, this is my only part. In the whole show. Yeah, you're not gonna mess this up. And Bobby's beatboxing them is so we're still on stage. Now it's just three of us and Mike and Bob is behind the set fighting, tussling. <laughs> like fist fighting? Oh yeah, tussling, wrestling like, you know. Huh. Had to be broken up. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does uh Bobby Brown's drug use start around this time? You know, yeah. yeah. It definitely started then. Um Cocaine? I'm not sure what he'll put in the movie, but I think he's pretty open with it now. Yeah. Yeah, cocaine, um, what do they call it? When you mix the cocaine with the weed and the moolah. cigarette and moolah, primos moolah, or whatever yeah. it is. And uh, I remember going to his room one day and he had one rolled in a cigarette and I just playfully took a hit and it felt like my head just exploded. I'm like, whoa. Like, how, how, how can you do this, That's man? <laughs> and, um, and so it was presented to, because I, you know what, to this day, I can honestly say I've never actually saw Bob smoke crack, snort cocaine, shoot. I've never actually witnessed him doing anything. I mean, I've been around him when he's been loaded, but I've never actually witnessed him doing drugs, to be honest with okay. you. But he was doing drugs. Man, yeah. I mean. I it guess, is what it is. I guess it's safe to say. But um, yeah, that was it, man. And we, I mean, we started noticing like more like the behavior when we would go to the studio mm -hmm. and we're trying to record and he would just be passed out on the couch or laid on the floor, like right up under the speakers. I'm like, wow, how the hell can he sleep right there? Or we would go to vocal rehearsal and he would just, he would just fall out as soon as we got to, to wherever we was going. So the other four members had a vote. Yeah. And you guys voted him out. Yeah, because our manager said, look, um, Bobby's hanging out with drug dealers. You know, he's getting in trouble with the police. He's missing shows. MCA is going to drop you. You're going to lose all your endorsement, sponsorship, whatever it is that could happen if you don't vote him out. If he stays in the group, you guys won't have a group. That's the way it was presented to us. Okay. It was like we almost, we didn't have a choice. So did every member vote yes? Yeah, every member voted yes. Okay. Who was the one that went to Bobby to tell him the news? The manager did. Oh, you weren't even there. <laughs> we weren't even there. <laughs> I mean, we were at the airport when they told him, and it was just, it was rough hearing it. I mean, it was just, because we didn't even talk to him. It was just really weird. Okay, so you didn't even get to see his reaction or nothing no, else like that? No, no. Mm -mm. Okay. Was it weird not having Bobby Brown in the group? It was weird. I mean, it was, um, it was, it was a little pleasant not having all the antics 
of all of the drama of not knowing if he's going to show up or not. That part was cool, but the group wasn't the same. It definitely wasn't the same. I mean, when we started off, the vision was a five-man group. It was mm -hmm. always to have one person singing lead and the choreography of the four guys in the back. So it was definitely different not having him. Okay. So then Bobby signs a solo deal mm -hmm. and blows up. Yeah. But his first album, King of Stage, did not blow up. Oh, that was his... That, oh, was, that was his first album. That was the first album. So my prerogative was my the prerogative second? was a second. Don't be cruel was the second album. Don't be cruel. Yeah, that was the name of the album. Yeah, that was a huge one. That was like absolutely the album of the year. And oh yeah, and everything. He made all of us jealous. <laughs> so you guys felt some type of way about it. Oh my God, yeah, because I mean we did all for love. That was our third album. Mm -hmm. That was the first album without Bob. Right. And then we did Heartbreak. When we did Heartbreak. That's when he was recording with Teddy Riley and Babyface. And that tour, it was really weird because we went out on tour. It's a new edition. It was the Heartbreak Tour. Mm -hmm. And the first person we signed on to that tour to open up was Albie Shore. Hmm. Okay. So it was a new edition, Albie Shore. Bobby was just getting off the ground. So he was the third person added to the tour. But he wasn't as big at the time. But he was blowing up fast. And I remember driving on to the venue in the parking lot, and we drove by some fans, and we let down the window. We was like, hey, what's up? Hey, they was like, hey, new edition. Hey, um, who y'all here to see? And it was like, Bobby Brown. I'm like, but it's our show. What are you talking about? <laughs> we're headlining. <laughs> but they were there to see him, and he blew up fast. And so it was hard for Al be sure, mostly because he had to go on after Bob. Bob opened up. And he had to go on after Bob, and it was really hard. He ended up quitting the tour. Well, and that tour turned into a disaster. Not the Heartbreak Tour. The Heartbreak Tour was amazing. Which was the tour that Bobby was on that just... That was know, Home Again. That was before or after? That was after. After, okay. That was after everyone okay. went solo, and then got we it. got back together. Okay, got it. Okay, so let's, we'll, we'll get to that then. Yeah.